Alright. Spinneret is created by Crazy Crow. That is spelled with a K's, not C's. So, in my opinion, I love it. We have Spinneret herself, this adorable girl, grad student to a scientist. Hey, how do you. Hey, I guess it's how she becomes a superhero. That's right! An experiment that got screwed up! Specifically, she accidentally fell into the machine thingy, and in fact parodies Peter Parker's origin story, Peter Parker's Spider-Man, which is owned by Marvel, but it parodies his superhero origin by having her, I want to say it was her cell phone she dropped into this mutated spider habitat, but none of them bite her. She actually shakes them all back off. I found that amusing. It's funny. At any rate, she ends up with six arms, and she does have wet swinging abilities, slinging abilities, but um, it doesn't come out her hands. <laughs> we're getting more, uh, we're getting more anatomically correct here. And she does make jokes about her spidey senses, but I'm not really sure if she has them. She is mostly joined by Mechanin, who is this lovely young Asian lady who unfortunately suffers from ALS. It's actually why she made her power suit. It's so she can invigorate her nerves. In fact, really, I'd have learned far more from this comic than the ice bucket challenge if I had not already had the basic understanding of ALS because I got curious and looked it up. But yeah, it's mostly about them. I'll go ahead and admit, spoiler alert, Tiger, who is definitely not a black tiger. <laughs> Poor guy, but he does have a point. It is better to keep black out of the name. It turns it into a race thing. I agree with him wholeheartedly. But yeah, he will eventually leave. I'm up to issue 15. He might reappear later, I don't know. Also, but yeah, it's about Spinneret's life mostly. Again, usually joined by Mecha Maid. She has, uh, Spinneret has a grungingly helpful roommate. There is also a Canadian group of superheroes. You have their leader, Green Gable, who unfortunately is in a superhero gig that's passed down from mother to daughter. And uh, he's kind of a dude. So he wears a dress. It's actually kind of funny because London the werewolf gives him heck for it. <laughs> It's actually rather funny the first time he does put on pants, and he does eventually put on pants, and it is funny, and there, have a look in my chest. Sorry about that. And London is a funny guy. He's unfortunately forgotten how to turn back into a human, and werewolves in this universe, they kind of start out as the, you know, poor, pitiful, cursed person, but eventually can learn not only to control it, but to be able to shapeshift when they want. Then there is Cat O Nine Tails. This woman I thought was an effeminate man at first. She, her suit's kind of compressing. But, actually a woman. And as her name implies, her superpower is, at least in part, to have, well, nine freaking large cattails. They're really more like tentacles, but... And she's also a masseuse. And apparently she's a god of masseuses. There was, at one time a Captain Alberta, and more on him, and more on that douchebag in a moment. And then there is Minerva, who is a later addition, since as apparently I'm handing out spoilers. 
She is a Cerberus. She is a guardian of hell. She actually comes into the comic after while she is chasing some escaped souls. Actually, it was pretty freaking metal. She has, of course, three heads, and all of them, she's one person, but I suppose you could say her three heads are kind of like different aspects of her personality. She actually gets into an explanation at some point. Apparently, the memories of the three heads consolidate when she sleeps. Now, we're about to talk about Captain Alberta, and the big warning the big one of two warnings I wanted to give. The first warning, seems as it's easier, some of the issues do have to be bought to see them. Y you get kind of a preview. Luckily, these are usually smaller. They aren't vastly important. I've already come across two of them, and so far it's not been horrible but they are a part of the story. I'm hoping to get a decent, steady paycheck soon, so that way I'll be able to patronize this person as well as read the whole thing series. The other issue is the person who's writing this is obviously a left-wing liberal. Now, if you've watched any of my videos that would have anything to do with that, you would know that this is not usually an issue. And admittedly, it's not a huge issue for me, even though I'm getting to the point where I think he's a, being a little too blunt. There is something to be said for subtlety. I mean, heck, I noticed he's doing it. But, the central antagonists, you've got... Doctor, Universe, and Greta. When asked why he became like this, because, you know, he used to be that good, do-it-for-science, do-it-for-humanity type person, but apparently he read an Ayn Rand novel. And actually, not only was it kind of funny, but he actually did do it somewhat dramatically. Just tossed out a one-liner when Spinner had asked him why. But then you get more on his backstory, and actually it's a decent setup for a supervillain that got inspired by Ayn Rand, because the government came and took what was supposed to be his for the greater good technology, because it could have been used for weapons and he was going to sell it to the Chinese. So yeah, actually, not a bad setup. And then there was that pyromaniac that torched a bus because he's tired of government handouts. And then you have Captain Alberta, who was a part of the Canadian group, but we meet him while he was on probation. In fact, apparently, he was on sensitivity training and didn't complete it. He said he was ready, but he wasn't... It, they, there wasn't even a fight. It was rather quick. More or less, they said, okay, you know, we'll give you a chance gets on, insults everybody, and then he's outright tossed out. Not probation, just friggin' tossed. He was created in a fracking incident, and actually says he has the power of fracking. So yes, good comic, but if you can't stand getting preachy with politics, you're not gonna want to do it. And if you are a stringent non-left-wing or non-liberal and can't handle anything of that, don't read it. And then, the crazy, the crazy stupid awesome, and really stupid awesome kind of sums up my feelings on it. Benjamin Franklin is a superhero. Yeah, some time traveler wanted to go back and assassinate Hitler, but Benjamin Franklin kind of ended up in the future. And apparently, especially since, as I recall, one of his inventions led to time travel being possible, he can't die. Because some law says if you go in the future, you can't die. The reason? You become ridiculously lucky. If anyone tries to throw a punch on Benjamin, he will evade. 
And it also works if he punches you. You gonna feel it. So he pops back in the past, throws a bunch of money where it'll grow an investment, and then, in the modern day, founds a civil rights group for superheroes. Then also, hey, his super suit's cool looking. So yeah, I just... Benjamin Franklin's a superhero. Yes! That's all for now. See you later.